Hello everyone and welcome to AB Creative. Today's episode is especially dedicated to all those of you who say oh, I'm not artistic at all, I don't have an, any artistic bone in me and believe me I know what I'm saying because I'm an art teacher so as my daily job so every day somebody's telling me oh, I'm not good at art, I can't draw. Well believe me you are all creative and if you start with simple steps, you can, you can make something that's pretty amazing. So today, we're going to make a set of coasters. And it's a very simple technique, but very effective. This is going to be a, just a little ring pour. I'm not going to use any bigger cups. Just a little lid from my deodorant. And I'm just going to layer the colors. So I think I'm going to go with black first maybe some bronze you can see that I'm just pouring the paint on the edge if I was pouring from really high the colors would mix but I want them quite separate it's pastel pale yellow a little brown okay my little cup is totally full now I can either move my hand and make like circle moves or just pour it straight. So maybe this one I'll just pour straight. And now I'm going to tilt it to cover the edges. You always think which part do you want to keep. So if I want to keep this here, I'm just going to do this part first. So I'm going towards this corner and I'm back. I should be wearing gloves, but I prefer touching the paint with my fingers. You can tilt as much as you want, you can remove the section you don't like. I'm not too keen on this part, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And stretching the middle part. And once you're happy, We just leave it. I think I'm quite happy now with this. Quite pretty. Now I quite like this dark section in the middle and you see whichever paint you're putting first in your little cup will be the paint just the one in the center. So if you want to create depth you might want to start with darker and then getting gradually lighter. That's obviously up to you. I'm going to layer the paint differently this time. It's nice bronze. Okay, that's enough. This time, I'm not just going to hold the little cup straight, I'm going to make circular moves. So let's see what the difference I can create. The paint is quite thick, so it's not so easy. Oh, oh no! I tripped this way. Okay, so let's just move it. Oh, I've wasted so much paint. Oh my goodness, this is like a piece of wood. Ha! Huh. Interesting. This is actually funny because if I was really trying to recreate a piece of wood, I think I would struggle with this one. Just accidentally, I made a wooden coaster. One more. You can always write down the order if you want to repeat something similar. But at the moment, I'm just really experimenting. I'm not really thinking. I want them identical. I want them different. My hands are going to be so dirty. My hands. Okay, I'm quite happy with this one. Oh well, I wasn't planning to make so many, but to be honest now, I think I'll just complete the set and make the fourth one. stretching towards the last corner. Now how different are these? And each one was made with the same colors, just in different order. Now again, you've noticed that some of them have got chunks of, bigger chunks of color. So if you want that in your ring pour, you have to use more paint in, the, in your little pot. Uh, if, you want, if you want it to look more like tree, tree bark, you just layer thinner colors and more layers. Now I'm planning another stage for this, however I'm not going to use these because they are wet and they will be getting dry. So I've got four coasters, uh, 
I'm going to show you some embellishment that you, you can do if you wish. I'm going to show you how I'm planning to embellish my little coasters that I made some time ago. They were just rain pour coasters. I am planning to coat them with resin so then they'll be all nice and shiny and actually those beautiful metallics will pop. However, I've received a box of something amazing from Arteza to check. And once I've opened it, I just, I just can't resist. So I'm going to add some glitter. These are all the amazing colors of gl glitter. I looked at them and I sort of can't make up my mind. These are my finalists. So it's copper, holographic black and chocolate. I don't want really to take away from all the patterns and make it too sort of overloaded. So I think I might actually go with chocolate and just make the lines pretty subtle. Let's see. So now I'm taking a bit of PVA glue and I'm going to mix it with water because I don't want it too thick. I keep my water in the spray bottle so it's very useful and I'm just going to mix. Now I'm looking at my tile thinking where would the line of glitter look best. I'm just going to use this glue and a very thin brush and I'm just going to draw the line. To make sure that uh, the glue is not dried up and I'm ready to apply my glitter. You have to be pretty quick otherwise the glue will dry out. Ah, just generously apply the glitter. Now I'm just repeating the same process with the other tiles. You choose which line you want to go over, use your PVA with a small brush and then apply glitter. I'm just trying to apply only on the glued line and I'm leaving it to dry. This is my last one. I'm going to add the line in the dark area and I will leave the tile to dry with the rest of them. On this tile I actually made lines on both sides, just the middle and I've got sort of two lines coming around it and I think I quite like it so I am going to add second line to the rest of the tiles, just a small one on the other side. Now I'm just waiting for the tiles to get dry. You can play with glitter, it's quite therapeutic. Fold the paper like this very carefully so the glitter stays in place. Get your container ready and put it all nicely back. These are perfectly dry now, so I'm using a very soft brush and I'm just taking the axis of glitter off. Just brush it off gently. And I will repeat it with every single time. So this is the tape I'm going to use to prevent the back from being covered with resin. By the way, the back looks like this, so I've got tiny little legs so I'll have to cut the tape so it fits between the edge and the little leg and all around. Uh, I'm using painter's tape, doesn't matter which colour, this is scotch tape. I, I bought it from Amazon, there will be a link for all the products I'm using so don't worry about that. As this tape was a bit too thick for my purpose, I am cutting it in half. And I'm, as you can see the back, we've got those little cute legs. So I basically need to cover all that area from the edge and the legs as well. By the way, the back looks pretty, pretty nice, doesn't it? This lovely. It's quite time consuming, but believe me, it's worth it because later on you don't have to remove all the resin from underneath. Now I'm going to trim the edges 
and basically the tile will be ready for resin. Now this is the resin I'm going to use, it's Ultra Cast by Elikem. I use this resin when I coat uh, coasters, trays. It's heat resistant so you can put your hot drink on and it's fine. Uh, as you've noticed I did put the gloves on. You can wear a respirator mask, however this resin is completely non-toxic so I'm actually personally not wearing it but I recommend in any other case just please do your respirator when you work with resin. So this is two parts resin to one part hardener. So if I'm going to use 50 milliliters of the resin then I'll have to add 25 milliliters of the hardener. Well, one thing I forgot to tell you, anytime you're using resin, you have to make sure that the surface you're putting resin on is completely oil free. So if you were using silicone, for example, I didn't, but if you use silicone, you have to really carefully clean it off. I'm just using a moist baby wipe to clean the surface perfectly well. Now I'm going to spend three, four minutes mixing really thoroughly. You want both elements, both resin and hardener to be really well combined. If you see some cloudy bits, it means it's not well mixed. Make sure you scrape all the edges really well. You should also check if your surface is perfectly level and then you can place your, your work on something higher so that the resin and the axis of resin may drip down. So all set up for the resin. I've got just this one odd pinky tile. I'm just going to make like a small puddle in the middle and then I'm going to spread it to all the corners. As you can see I'm not really measuring, I'm just sort of eyeballing, trying to make it the same size. This resin is self-leveling so it should spread really nicely. You want to make sure that the edges are nicely covered. So first I'm just using the stick, touching all, every single edge. And I might use actually my finger also, dragging along the edges to make sure they're all resin nicely. The last thing I have to do, once I've checked all my corners and all the edges, I'm going to use a chef's torch to pop the bubbles. Notice how the colors really nicely pop once the bubbles are removed and I probably will have to do it once or twice uh, within the next half an hour to make sure there's nothing forming on the surface. This is one day later. I can touch the resin but I, I haven't peeled the tape off yet. So now you can see how beautiful shiny the paint is, the Artesa metallics are and you can see the glitter as well. I hope you liked it. So please press like if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.